Hello Pirates, welcome to another base clinic. Uh, this time we'll be talking about the frontline turrets uh, and how they perform against the ma many co different Conqueror halls available in game. This information is current as of December 3rd, so the latest upda update was in November and that's what we're gonna take into account. Mostly we'll be discussing what specials to use. Um, we'll do a quick comparison between the Basilisk and the Draconian Scattergun. Uh, what armors to use, if any, uh, talk a little bit about the frostbite turret, is it any good or should you really go for the cold snap limited version of it? And uh, where to position the minigun in your base and, and so on. Uh, just before we start, remember my goal here is not to cover every possible combination. There are many, many, many specials and armors and options you can use, it depends on your base layout. So adapt what you see here um, for your base for your guard for the turrets you have um, make it work a, a, as a whole right um, and if you don't really want to go through the whole thing uh, turret by turret just skip to the last two minutes of the video where i do a quick summary um, and that's the version for people with short short attention span or not a uh, the turret bases, just remember, there's different levels, the maximum power goes up as you upgrade. Some of the turrets we'll see, they do not fit the lower level turret bases, uh, you need them at least at level 6. And to actually achieve the full potential, you need level 7 turrets, because they have the transformer slot. Which in most cases I'll be using to buff damage, in a couple cases I'll be using to buff rest. There are many frontline turrets, I'm not going to be covering the older ones because, let's face it, I mean, they're not effective anymore. Uh, some of them, like the Sentinel-5 or the Cryo Launcher turret, they have good range um, and they will outrange pretty much every attacker or most of them, um, but they don't do decent damage. Uh, in other cases, uh, like the Disruptor Cannon or the Gargoyle 2, they actually do good damage, they do comparable damage to modern turrets, but they are very, very short range, like under 80, so which means pretty much every single weapon we have in modern game for Conquerors, we will outrange them, and if, especially if they are on a level 5, level 6 uh, turret that dies fast, they'll never get a, a shot fired, right? Um, I wasn't gonna cover the Wendigo when I wrote the slides, and I'm sorry for that, but I actually put a slide on the Wendigo towards the end, so forget about that last bullet in there. Let's start with the minigun turret. Uh, this is a limited turret, you can only have one in your base if, if you have it. Uh, I find it extremely useful. Uh, you can actually place it due to the range of 150. You can place it in your central island and reach channel. But because this turret has that wind-up effect where the more it fires, the faster it reloads, I'd rather put it in channel where it's going to be fired a lot longer. And it, it, it'll never stop firing to slow down, uh, lose the wind-up reload effect. So this turret without specials can already kill the Spite and the Fury. Um, as you add expensive concussive charge, you gain 60% splash and 60% damage. Um, so now you're actually hurting the revenge as well, the regular revenge fleet, not with the Harlock. Uh, if you add the AT Transformer, now you can even hurt Vendettas if they are not fully in Bloodthirst. And this turret just won't be effective. So if you, if as an attacker you want to tank this turret, lead with a Retribution, a Malice, or just add a Harlock Revenge to your Revenge Fleet, or just as a tank, plain and simple. As for the secondary special, uh, you can use a defense special like I have up there in the picture. You can use another special to get more splash. I mean, that's really up to you. Cold Snap and Frostbite. Uh, the Cold Snap can be used in the Central Island because of its longer range of 140. Uh, the Frostbite is definitely a frontline turret, range of 105. Um, the Cold Snap has a longer uh, effect of disabling auras than the Frostbite. Uh, 
it's half the time in the frostbite but the frostbite actually does a lot of damage uh, if you look at it uh, it's very good at killing vendettas um, with the right specials uh, eruption pyre and xinthium shells if everything's r15 it can actually do very decent damage against the spite and the malice before they get full bloodthirst uh, so if you put that at the entrance of your channel when they still don't have it you can actually hurt these ships uh, significantly uh, adding the transformer will make it more effective against these three ships uh, but not necessarily uh, help you with the revenge or harlock revenge or retribution or fury they're immune to explosive damage um, remembering that when these turrets hit their main effect is not direct damage they do it's actually the fact that they disable aura so if someone's coming in with a retribution using resonance capacitor the aura being disabled the capacitor is disabled so now that ship has zero turret resistance and every single other turret in your base will be hitting them in full pretty much doubling the damage for a few seconds that can be very effective the only exception is the vendetta because the vendetta has built-in 40 percent turret resistance so it does decrease a little bit but not by much but still the vendetta gets direct damage so I find these turrets to be really useful. I have a cold snap in my base. I think people should have at least one of them. One cold snap or one frostbite. Here's a very old turret, the Vulture. Uh, it's not commonly seen in bases, um, but actually if you put that in your island or at the very end of your channel, when the ships get into that point are less than 50% have less than 50% of their health left the vulture has 50% chance of critical hit meaning what you see here on the damage per salvo after turret resistance if it hits a critical hit it, you actually get this like the full damage as if the turret resistance isn't there in that case for instance um, if you put that in the island with two fire support, AT transformer, the specials and everything, I mean, even basically with hurt, retribution, spite, vendetta, and to a point, the malice. Now, after the transformer, you can hurt the revenge now with penetrative, but once you get a critical hit towards the end of the, the battle, uh, it can even overpower the malice or the spite. It won't be effective against fewer retribution or the Harlock revenge. Um, the other interesting thing is despite this being a missile turret, it does equal amounts of penetrative and explosive damage. That's why I've separated the damage, what it does on each type and how each type gets buffed. So, and you can see it affects different uh, ships. The only downside of this turret is the range. So you see down here 93% 0.75 is the maximum range you can get unless you sacrifice damage and instead of using smart warheads you use one of those old researchable specials that gives you 5% more range still you're gonna be around 97 range give or take but towards the end of the battle usually attackers most of them will be rushing so this on a level 7 turret with the proper specials can actually if you get a critical hit can actually tip the battle in your favor right so i recommend heavy armor uh, placing the island or at the end of the channel towards the end of the battle so you hit enemies coming in with less than 50 percent health left and most people don't use flanks on their basers anymore anyway so the likelihood this will be shot down by a flank is about 30 percent even if they have one the blunderbuss i think this is uh one of the newest, uh, yeah, the second newest, I think, uh, frontline turret. It's a ballistic turret, so it's a cannon. Uh, but unlike all the other cannons, this one has multi-shot. Um, only a few turrets have multi-shot. This is one of them. Uh, and that means when you add specials, such as the hydroxide-coated barrels, which was meant for corrosive, but I'm using here because it increases multi-shot you keep the damage per shot and you increase the overall damage of the turret right and you can also use the pitted uranium shell for 60% uh, more damage and I only have mine at R8 at R15 that that's even more 
Um, it's a very good turret to fight the Retribution and the Vendetta. It also works uh, to damage the Fury and early in the battle, if you put that uh, at the entrance of your channel, it can hurt the Malice. Uh, it will not be effective against the Harlock Revenge or the Revenge. Uh, and the Spite is one of the best tanks against it actually. Uh, so if you're prepping or if, if there, you see these turrets at the entrance of the channel, the best way is to lead with the Spite. Um, have Vendettas coming behind or something like that. But it's a very good turret. So the other option instead of using Hydroxide or Coated Barrels because you only get two multi-shot is to use the EM Rails 3 like I have over here and this will give you a 25% chance at a critical hit that adds 300% to the basic damage so you get the number here let's say 1000 plus 300% so plus 3000 so you're going to be doing a total of 4000 damage in that case you would get past the revenge uh, a basic revenge um, deflection but still the resistance in the revenge may be too much so I'm going for consistently more damage with the multi shots instead of a 25% chance of a mega hit because these turrets actually don't get to fire four or five rounds to make sure that happens they'll probably be dead before this third round at most Here's the Draconian Scattergun it's, uh, and the Basilisk. I'm going to cover both of them here. Uh, they're the only corrosive towers in the game. Uh, one thing I wanted to highlight here before we look at the numbers. Uh, this turret is not buffed by fire support. If you look at the fire support buffs, they do not include corrosive damage. Uh, they both have the same range, 105. Uh, the Draconian reloads twice uh, as slow as the Basilisk. Same multi-shot. Uh, both hit submerged, so they're actually good if you have a spotter to damage subs. The Draconian has a more concentrated fire area, meaning if it's likely going to do more damage, not only because it does more base damage, but because it has uh, them more concentrated in a smaller area. You can also put more armor on the Draconian Scattergun because it has lower power consumption when compared against the Basilisk. So with the Basilisk, for instance, I cannot do this setup because it goes over power, right? Um, base turret can already do damage to Revengers, Furies, uh, before full BT and submarines. You add Hydroxide Coated, you get two multi-shot and 30% extra corrosive damage. Now uh, the Draconian Scattergun can actually overpower the Fury even at full Bloodthirst. Um, you can add the Transformer for more damage. But this turret is actually ineffective against most conquerors. Most of them have more corrosive deflection than this turret can deal damage, any of them. So it's very niche, it's pretty much against Furies, uh, Old Revengers and Submarines. And my last minute inclusion, the Wendigo. Um, just take a look, I mean the, the base damage it does is not that great, it's 504. Uh, but, you know, it's enough to hurt a Malice uh, or a, re uh, a Revenge before full blood thirst or a Retribution. Now, the good thing is this turret actually deals, uh, if you look at the bottom here, over 4,000 uh, damage through Shockwaves. And they Shockwave really very often. So when you look at the Shockwave damage, now you can actually beat a Retribution, uh, beat a, a Revenge even with their full BT. Um, but the main benefit of the Wendigo is not the damage directly and that's why I use the ATR transformer for more range even though there's a damage penalty. It's because this one will slow down attackers, will slow down their reload, will slow down their resistances if they have any. So it's more of like a, a turret that should be there for assistance and because of its range of 131 it's hard to place it in the island and have it effectively firing. So most people put it as use it as a frontline turret. There's really no good specials for this one other than defensive specials um, because it doesn't have splash damage. There's nothing to buff damage or reload for radioactive turrets. So, you know, anti pinch or uh, different types of resistances that Sully could have. I mean, eventually, if you want, you could do something to speed up 
projectile speed like Xenithium shells or there's a there's one special that gives plus 10% reload you could use that one too in summary here we go um, minigun is good to, at, at killing spite fury revenge cold snap and frostbite the vendetta uh, the voucher it's pretty decent at retribution spite and vendetta the blunderbuzz will take care of retribution vendetta and fury and and, the, and you see the malice none of them other than the wendigo can actually hurt the malice directly but the cold snap frostbite and blunderbuss and the voucher all of them hurt the malice so if you mix um scattergun with blunderbuss with cold snap or frostbite and the minigun pretty much you cover all types of uh ships and you can hurt them all so the ideal base here you're going to have a mix of these turrets and more of whatever damage your ships aren't doing. So if you have a good radioactive guard, probably you don't want the Wendigo. But if you have a good corrosive uh, Valiant built in, you may not want the Scattergun at all. Then you put more of Blunderbusses and Cold Snaps and Frostbites and so on. So again, adapt that to your needs, but keep this chart handy so you know if you're covering all your bases. I hope that was informative for you guys and uh, see you next time.